Hi there. I wanted to do a very quick video to show you how you can convert a 2D photo like this one to a 3D model with colors using Pithel. You can find all the steps for this video in this article here, which I'll put a link in the description. So it has all the details needed. The first thing you will need to do, we need to make sure that we have a photo, of course, that we want to convert to a 3D model. We need to crop it so it becomes like a square, like this one. And then you also need to create the mask, okay? This can be done in Photoshop quite easily. I'm not going to show you here how to do that with Photoshop because there are so many tutorials on Photoshop on the internet. Okay, so you need a mask and you need the photo. And then you need to export into a PNG. So you can also do that quite easily. It needs to be 512 pixels squares. I've already created mine, right? So I don't need to do that anymore. Now make sure you go to the article. You'll find this link here. Open that link. And this will open Google Cloud, okay? So we need to run this notebook. Make sure you have a GPU selected. So it should say a hardware accelerator GPU. Save it. And then start running the steps, right? So we start running, first of all, we download the PFU GitHub repository. It will say it's not authored by Google, but it shouldn't be a problem. run this cell here, tunnel train model. And while that's running, let's go here and we can upload our own images. So the images that you see here, so you can delete them. You can also try to see how it looks like before you, you put your, use your own pictures, but I've already done that, so I'm not going to repeat it. And then you can upload your own pictures. In my case, the file name is called mental underscore two. Okay, that's the actual photo. And then the mask needs to be code mental underscore two underscore mask. So it's now uploaded. Okay, this step here is important. The default version of uh, PyTorch in Google Cloud is actually very recent, it's 1.12. We need to downgrade PyTorch to 1.4. And the same for Torch Vision. So now everything is installed and we can run P4. Make sure that uh, the version is what we expect it to be 1.4.0, that's correct. And now we can run this script here, test.sure, and that's going to convert our photo to a 3D model. Now we can go into this folder on the left hand side. In there's a results folder which we can see if we refresh. Okay, so it's here. So inside the, the results P4 demo folder, then you have uh, three files, and you really only want this uh, OBJ file. Okay, we're going to download that. And I'm going to open a mesh lab which I recommend you to download as well. MeshLab will allow us to see this 3D model. Okay, so all I have to do is import Mesh and uh, you need to find uh, where you downloaded it to. And you see that's it. That's my 3D model. I mean, this is a research, so it's not going to look perfect. Right, but it already gives you an idea of the power of uh, Tower Hands there. So I've done this with very little effort. Okay. All right, so we've managed to convert a 2D photo to a 3D model with colors. And now let's imagine that you want to train your own data set with P4. 
In order to train PIFU, we need uh, a data set of 3D models with uh, real people. The data set that the PIFU paper used was a commercial data set from a website called uh, Render People. As you can see, it's also not uh, very uh, cheap. Each model can cost 90 pounds. And uh, imagine if you have uh, like 300 models, that's going to cost a few thousand. Uh, but this website does have a free model that we can uh, download and the link is available here. So the link is here, okay? We can download this model and open it with uh, uh, any software really like Blender or even uh, MeshLab should also work. Okay, so this is the 3D model that we're going to use for our training. We're only going to train on this uh, mesh, but uh, if you are able to gather your own data set, then you can just replace this single mesh with uh, your whole data set. To make it really easy for you to uh, run the training, I've created a, a Docker file, which automates all the steps needed to uh, prepare your data set for training. Even downloading the, the mesh, it's done automatically here, as you can see in all these steps. My advice is that you try to just use this Docker file to run the training in your uh, computer. Okay, for the prerequisites, you definitely need an NVIDIA GPU for this. A powerful GPU, preferably, but you should be able to run this on an NVIDIA RTX 3070 like mine. Probably also will run on a 3060 because we only have one mesh, right? <laughs> if we had like uh, 300, it, it probably wouldn't run that easily, right? Because the, the purpose of this training is just to show you how you can train it with a larger data set, we are only using one mesh, okay? And even then, it takes a bit of time. Okay, so you need NVIDIA GPU. You need to make sure uh, you have all the drivers installed. Then you need to install the, the Windows subsystem for Linux. Just pick uh, Ubuntu 20. This is where, uh, where I've tested this Docker container. You need to install Docker inside the Ubuntu 20. That's very easy to do. Then you also need to uh, install the NVIDIA Container Toolkit, which is not so easy to do. I think I have a link somewhere here, which uh, points you to the right place to install NVIDIA Container Toolkit. Okay. To prepare for training, you need to download the mesh, right? And that's done inside the Docker file. And then there's some data pre-processing, spherical harmonics calculations, and neural radiance stuff, uh, very complicated uh, calculations, right? This is where it can go wrong, right? Because it uses the tree mesh library, which the tree mesh library is actually very good for uh, doing ray tracing calculations. And it allows you to do that on triangular meshes. And if, uh, but the tree mesh library can actually be installed with or without a library from Intel, PyEmbry, or well, Embry is the, the library from Intel. This is a very highly optimized library that can do ray tracing calculations. So in fact, all the work is done here. If you don't have this library installed properly, then it would actually default to the tree mesh implementation, which basically it doesn't work for a, a mesh the size of the ones that we're using in uh, random people, yeah? Yeah, you can basically get stuck here in a data generation if you don't have your uh, environment set up properly. This happened to me in the live stream that I did before, and you can actually uh, go and, and check it out and see what I did wrong. Anyway, I've managed to solve that, and because of that, and I realized this is actually not that simple setup, I've uh, created the Docker uh, file here. You definitely want to use it. Okay, so once the data generation is done, now we can do the training, okay? So I'm going to show you how you can actually build the Docker container first. So let's start Ubuntu. Okay, so I have Ubuntu started, really easy. I'm going to make sure that Docker is running. Um, I need to, uh, I haven't really set up Docker that well. Okay, now I can actually see if I already have anything running. Uh, everything has to be run with Ubuntu. So. You can see I have some previous attempts of running uh, this Docker container. I'm going to do it from scratch, okay? So I'm going to take the command from here. Okay, this is for building, okay? So you need to make sure you build the Docker container after you download it, of course. 
And if you want to download it, actually, there's a link here, gitcon. This is a gist I created. Let me just see where I am. Okay, so I'm going to do a gitcon here, yeah? So I'll just paste the link. And that's, then it creates a very uh, cumbersome file name, but yeah, I mean, I'm in it. So the Docker file is here. And now I can run this command here. Okay. So this is very fast for me because I've built this before. So all the steps are here. It should download the the mesh. It should uh, also download any prerequisites, install any libraries they need. As part of the build, it already runs the data pre-processing. So when I start this container, I can already do the training. Okay, so let's do that. So I'm going to start the Docker container. Yeah. What I like to do, I like to add minus minus RM. Or minus, yeah, minus RM, I think. And this allows me to create this Docker container once. Then when I exit, it will delete it. You probably don't want to do this if you want to keep the files inside there. But I do this just to keep things tidy. Okay. Okay, so now we go to home user. Okay. And this is where we have P4 already. It's already cloned. Yeah. And it's ready to train. So to train, by the way, I already have the right version of PyTorch. You don't have to do that. It's all set up for you. So I'm going to run the training for geometry. So just copy and paste this. And now it will train for the geometry. It might actually take my graphics card down. So we'll see whether it can record a video and at the same time do the training. Uh, it will run for a few epochs. So the next thing I wanted to show you, right? I'm not going to let this complete. You can do that in your own environment even if it's just one. Okay, so run training for color, okay? So the first one, basically we are training the neural network that can do the geometry, basically that can create a mesh from a 2D photo. And here we are training the neural network that builds the texture. Okay? And it's also very easy to start it. And that's about it. I've showed you how you can actually try a PIFU, right? Uh, using a Google Cloud. And then I also showed you how to train PIFU using uh, your own environment and, and Docker, which Docker is really useful uh, because it allows you to set up very complicated environments in a container, which is separate from your own computer. And uh, because I've tried this in my own computer, I can almost promise you that if you have a similar setup to mine, like a Windows 10, um, an RTX uh, a graphics card, and uh, if you also install the same version of uh, Windows Subsystem for Linux, it should work for you. All right, um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you found uh, this uh, video valuable, don't forget to press the like button or click it or, or thump it. <laughs> and uh, I'll see you again soon. Happy coding.